Hello, everyone. Welcome to our first webinar looking at the latest findings of our marketing intelligence study. Thank you all for being here today. I'm thrilled to see such a big group. I'm Rosina Barba Stefano, Senior Director of Research and Analytics, and I will be your host for today's session where we will dive into the results and insights. First, some housekeeping notes. This webinar is being recorded and will be posted on our corporate website by tomorrow. Those who registered to the webinar will re receive a link to the recording and deck tomorrow in your inbox. During the presentation, I will be addressing some of the regular queries we receive about the markets. But if you have questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to post them in the question panel. Important to note, I'm joined today by Chelsea Benitez, our Director of Consumer Research. She will look at those questions as I go through the slides. We will do our best to answer as many questions as we can live, but any we can't answer, we will respond via email post webinar. With that, let's start. First, let's talk about the methodology. This year, we partnered with MMGY Travel Intelligence to do our largest so far marketing intelligence study. We expanded our study from 15 to 25 markets, gathering over 25,000 responses in total. This study focuses on the age group that we tend to target in our consumer paid media efforts, 20 to 64. To participate in the survey, individuals had to qualify as both active international leisure travelers and active planners of such trips. Additionally, respondents were required to have traveled internationally in the past two years and have plans for an intercontinental trip within the next two. Here is the list of the 25 markets. The new markets that we added this year are mainly in Latin America and Europe. We added Argentina, Chile, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Ireland, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, and New Zealand. Let's dive into the findings. The presentation is broken down into three main sections, general destination preferences, past international trip, and their next intercontinental trip. In this section, we will dive into tra travelers' international destination preferences. We will share insights by region, Europe, Asia Pacific, and the Americas, highlighting key countries. As we dive into the travelers' preferences, as you will see in the next couple of slides, it is important to note that there has been changes in the travelers' preferences post-pandemic. Now over three years since the pandemic was officially announced, we, th we see that travelers are giving more weight to experiential personal considerations, like satisfying their sense of adventure or looking for activities that are more appropriate to their kids. When deciding where to go on an international over leisure trip, resting and relaxation remain the most important personal considerations for travelers. Same for understanding other cultures and seeing the world's most unique attractions remain important to travelers. However, regarding this two last other, their order has changed compared to 2019. These three top reasons most likely will remain on the top, more so the resting and relaxing. And I guess it's what it's expected as individuals want to break from their daily routines. Also, they are traveling abroad People are looking to explore other cultures and see the world's unique attractions, what they don't see at home. However, there are some differences after the pandemic worth calling out. All this percentage changes are statistically significant. Individuals have shifted to more experiential considerations. This percentage point increase could be interpreted by a desire to look for places where they feel alive, Families with kids looking for places where, where their kids can explore. Individuals are being less reserved and are indulging themselves. Going through the pandemic, 
Individuals gave priority to physical activities to keep healthy. And this is being translated to a consideration to decide where to go. Also, people are giving priority to fulfill their passions. And this is also in essence confirmed by the biggest loser. Even though the difference from 2019 is not statistically significant, it's important to mention that staying within my comfort zone lost three places going from seventh place of importance to 10th place. As I said, staying within the comfort zone is the least important of their personal considerations overall. So bye-bye comfort zone. However, again, there are exceptions to the rules. When looking at these considerations by region, the only region that sh the share of those who want to stay within their comfort zone increased compared to 2019 levels was in the Americas, with Chile and Canada going above the average of their region. And looking at the Asia Pacific market, it ranks last, but it markets like China, which is very risk averse, staying within their comfort zone is actually their number one personal consideration. But here is what I want you us, want us to focus on. In those post-pandemic changes, the considerations that have gained more relevance, satisfying a sense of adventure, more so among the Europeans with 13 percentage points difference and 12 percentage points um, among the Asia Pacific countries. Additionally, for Asia Pacific travelers, there is a 13 percentage point difference in the importance of indulging in luxury experiences. With the travelers from the Americas engaging their kids in activities suited for them and connecting with nature, showed the largest increase of in importance. Now looking at what they value from the destination perspective. Unfortunately, we added some response options to this question and adjusted some others to reflect current consumer sentiment. So it is not possible to compare this to pre-pandemic levels. Here, price is of the, of the trip is the number one reason for all travelers. But they also want to make sure it's easy to get there, direct flights available and length of flights. And that the decision provide enough natural features like mountains and lakes that would be linked to that sense of adventure that they mentioned in their personal considerations. But looking at those categories, the price is less important to the travelers from Asia Pacific. Interestingly, for Chinese, it's the least important on the list of considerations with only 20% saying that it's important to them. Also, it's important to keep in mind, travelers from Americas give more relevance to the quality of the beaches and the reputation of the destination. Activities available like diving or leisure activities like dining and night out. Also, accessibility to services for all, children, elderly, or person with disability. With the Asia Pacific countries, sustainability certification is more important compared to the other two regions. Personal safety is the main reason with nearly 50% followed by crowdedness. Even though we can't compare this to pre-pandemic levels, no surprise here. This is indicative of the post-pandemic landscape and the prevailing global conditions. It's essential to note that these findings pertain to all destinations, not specifically to the U.S. We'll dive into specific insights about the U.S. as a destination later in the presentation. As destination marketers, number three, it's really important. Lack of information for me to plan my trip. We need to make sure individuals have the access to the best information for easier planning of their trips. Looking at the same data by region, crowdness is less discouraging among Asia Pacific travelers, being very respectful. I believe this is not so relevant for them as this group, we have the countries with the largest population. Also, this same group find it less discouraging the lack of information for them to plan, but they do find it discouraging being unfamiliar with local customs and the local language. No surprise here, countries in the Americas give more weight to the visa requirements and the cleanliness in the destination as discouraging factors. 
Now that we know what they value, let's look at where they have been this past two years and what they have done in those trips. We ask individuals what countries they visited internationally since June of 2021. Here are the top ones. The US, France, and Spain are three most visited destinations by international travelers. Interestingly, to see Portugal in this list. However, looking at their visitation data, this country has seen visitation records in 2022 and 23 with strong visitation from the UK and Spain. The United States has the top destination for overnight leisure trips since June 2021 for Asia Pacific travelers and the Americas travelers. This last group ranking is a bit obvious, as in this group, we include Canada and Mexico. Let's remember that, for example, that 80% of international travel from Mexico is to the US. Although the US ranked fifth for Europe, it was the most important the most visited country outside of Europe. But why did they travel? In this following slides, we will discuss solely on their latest international trip. Top reason for international travel by far, escape from daily routine and seek a change of pace. Second reason, that individual urge to go to a particular place. We as marketers need to make sure we promote ourselves in a way that our destination is where that urge would take them. Also, 32% said it's a type of trip they do every year. This doesn't mean that it's the same place but the type of trip. As we mentioned earlier, for travelers, price matter when deciding where to go. One in four said they took advantage of a deal in the last trip. This is more relevant among travelers from the Americas, where one third said they took advantage of a travel deal, as we can see in this slide. Also, travelers from the Americas have a higher share of those that need a break from their routine. There are travelers from Asia Pacific. Important to call out here is that they do this type of travel regularly. And during their last trip, a quarter said they were celebrating milestones. Linked to those reasons, but looking at the central one is that personal motivation. At the end, it's about the individual with 30% saying they took that last international trip to treat themselves and have fun, followed by reducing stress and recharging. This is the essence of travel. Just to clarify here, connecting with family and loved ones refers to traveling with family members and spending time as family. Whereas visiting faraway friends and family is what we know as the regular VFR. And regarding this last one, visiting friends and family, Australians and travelers from New Zealand are above the average. Also travelers from India, Ecuador, and Belgium by at least four percentage points. Some call outs here. Treating themselves and having fun is highest among the travelers from the Americas with Colombia and Mexico having a highest share. Connecting with family and loved one is highest among Asia Pacific travelers participating among um, among travelers from New Zealand who come in come in seven percentage points over their region um, average. Switching gears, let's look at where they're heading next. Now we will focus on their next intercontinental trip, meaning the trip they're planning on taking in the next 12 months outside of their continent. In this section, it's important to clarify that this applies to all countries except Canada and Mexico. For respondents from these two countries, the questions are still addressed as international travel. Otherwise, the U.S. would have been excluded. We will be able to see the call out of this caveat with an asterisk below in the below the question at the bottom of the slide when applicable.
First, where are they planning on going outside of the region? 44% will be heading to North America, followed by Europe. But now let's look at each region. Nearly 40% of Europeans are likely to visit North America next year, followed by Asia, but not by far. Asia markets are our competitors when looking at the European markets. Also, here as destination marketers, we need to take advantage that 13% who know they are likely to take a trip, but they don't know where yet. We need to remain top of mind. Here we're also, here we see a challenge. Two out of three Asia Pacific travelers are considering traveling to Europe, followed by North America with 40%. At the country level, the US ranks fifth among Australians, six among Indians and New Zealanders, and in their list of in their list of consideration, but top one for Japan and North Korea. Here we also have a challenge. 60% of travelers from the Americas are saying they're planning a trip to Europe. That being said, the US ranks number one as their destination within the North American region options. Travelers from the Americas are two times more likely to visit the US than our neighbors. However, we are competing with Spain, Italy, and Mexico as their options. Also, it is important to remember that from the list of countries we surveyed from the Americas, all of them except Ecuador are part of the Schengen Area Visa Waiver Program. These travelers don't require a visa to go to Europe if they are staying less than 90 days. And if we add the strength of the dollar, this becomes a bigger challenge for us. And how long would those trips are likely to be? The majority of travelers are planning on spending over eight days on their next overnight leisure trip. On average, travelers from Europe will have the longest length of stay in their next overnight trip with 13 nights, followed by the Americas with 11. Asia Pacific travelers have the shortest length of stay with the nine nights. And who will they travel with? The majority would take that, that intercontinental trip with their significant other, followed by those with young children. Now looking at the regions, here Europe. Traveling with another adult as a couple ranks slightly higher among Europeans than the average. Also a quarter will travel as family with little kids. The main change compared to pre-pandemic is the increase in solo travel, which increased four percentage points. Looking at Asia Pacific, here solo travel and traveling with a group of friends is higher than the average of the study, with one in four considering traveling by themselves and one in five will travel with friends. Compared to 2019, changes in this region are more visible. Solo travel went four percentage points, traveling as a couple five percentage points up, and traveling with group six percentage points up. On the other side, family traveling with kids dropped five percentage points. My first reaction here was that family travel decline was due to China and their aging, uh, to Japan and their aging population. However, the biggest change is seen in China, where traveling with kids went down from 43% to 23%. Also, there was a switch among Australians from families traveling with kids to now families traveling as adults. But we do see changes in Japan but not from those traveling with kids, but those traveling as couples. It went up from 25% to now 41%. Those traveling with adult family members went down from 24 to 13%. The Americas. Travelers from the Americas skew high in family travel with their little ones compared to those in the other regions. This, however, remains the same 
compared to pre-pandemic levels. Talking about activities, no surprises? Yes, we would say everyone needs to eat, but food is certainly a driver for travel. Also, cultural and historical attractions. We as destination marketers need to make sure we convey the message of our assets and what we have to offer as destinations. To deviate a little bit from chart from bar charts, here is a table that shows the varied the various activities. These tables allow us to do a comparison of how each region indexes against the overall average for each category. A value exceeding 100 means that they skew higher um, than the average, while having a lower number than 100 indicates the opposite. Important callouts, theme parks among travelers from the Americans and how it is not important for Europeans. Cruising, educational aspects and religious reasons are important among the Asia Pacific travelers. Now let's move on and talk about the way they decide where to go. Let's start with destination selection. Over 50% of individuals already have a short list of places in mind. It's a bit of a puzzle for us as destination marketers. Moving the needle here can be tricky, but we can, we're here for the challenge. Also, about 15% are in the I want to travel, but not sure where zone. These travelers are more likely to sway with recommendations or finding a great deal. One third stat from a specific place, start with a specific place in mind. With this group of people, we need to make sure as destination marketers that our destination still remains top of mind. Here we see that the Europeans have a higher share of those with specific place in mind compared to the travelers in the other two regions, and also the lower share of those who are flexible about their destination when researching options. This has changed from pre-pandemic levels, going from 19% to 12%. Additionally, near 20% of Asia Pacific travelers said they're flexible during the destination selection process is the highest among the three groups, but it remains the same as in 2019. The travelers from the Americas, there is a three percentage point move from being flexible to having a few places in mind. Interestingly, destination selection timing is very short with nearly 40% saying they decide where to go in less than a month from the trip. This certainly was a change from, from pre-pandemic levels with a 13 percentage point increase. Most notable change is among the Asia Pacific travelers. Those selecting a destination in less than a month went from 28% to 54%. Chinese and Australians register around 30 percentage point increase, whereas Japan, Korea, and India show around 23 percentage point increase. The American travelers went from 23% to 35%, and Europeans from 21 to 30. Now, how are they gathering information on where to go? Websites on a computer, the number one follow up by personal recommendations. Now looking at this by region, we see that Asia Pacific travelers, as we know, are very social media driven. There are no big surprises here, but it's crucial to know that the emphasis is not solely on the type of the website but also on the device used to access the information. It's imperative for us to ensure our content is optimized for various screen sizes. Travel booking sites are the top 
of the list followed by review websites. Important call out here is destination specific websites with 44%. This information is great for us as destination marketers. We now know who we need to partner with the partner with to highlight our destinations. When it comes to social media, Europeans use less than travelers from the other regions. Well, the Asia Pacific regions not only skew high in social media, but also on travel blogs, online forums, and online travel magazines that are particularly popular for them. As the time to make decisions has shortened, so has, so has the window for researching activities and other travel aspects. Interestingly, many who typically take make decisions over three months before departure are now conducting their research just a month before the trip. Website via computer and laptop are the top one, followed by accessing websites using a mobile phone. There are slight differences when we look at destination information sources by region. The Americas use websites via mobile phone and rely on personal recommendations more than travelers from the other two regions. In line with choosing a destination or research, 40% of travelers book their flight only a month before their departure. Once travelers make their destination decision, they promptly move on to book their flights. There is no significant variance in the booking timeframe from flights across region. It aligns with their destination selection timelines. Here we notice a subtle shift in behavior compared to flight booking. Travelers tend to reserve their hotel closer to their departure date than they do their flights. This trend is more noticeable among Europeans and travelers from the Americas than among those from the Asia Pacific region. Now we're moving on the last section of our webinar, where we'll concentrate on how travelers perceive the United States. Survey respondents see the United States as diverse and trendy with an energetic vibe. This, perfect, this is perfect to consider when booking, when working on content development. The U.S. is considered trendy among all regions, particularly by travelers from the Americas, who also associate it with being open-minded, forward-thinking, and sophisticated. Europeans view the U.S. as diverse, but not so much in terms of being respectful or down-to-earth. About 30% perceive the U.S. as somewhat arrogant, while an equal proportion will find it welcoming a sentiment more pronounced among travelers from the Americas. The positive note is that only 5% regarding find the US as boring. Now let's break down the data um, based on visitation status. Considering where individuals have been to the US, how long ago, if they're planning to visit their next in their next 12 months, or if they're not planning their visit at all. These insights are drawn from the respondent selection regarding their likely international travel destination in the next year. Across the board, ratings are notably more positive among those who visited the US in the last two years and those planning to come in the next 12 months. Conversely, negative perception increase among those who are not planning to visit or those who have visited more than two years ago.
travelers primarily link the U.S. with diverse range of leisure attraction and its status as a popular travel destination. Across the board, Asia-Pacific travelers associate the U.S. with this attribute less than travelers from other regions. Europeans particularly link the U.S. with natural features and landscapes, surpassing travelers from other regions. Meanwhile, travelers from the Americas connect the U.S. with leisure attractions, travel convenience, overall trip cost, and service accessibility. Although the U.S. is popular and hold a positive reputation, it is seen as distinctive, but only 14% consider it as unexpected. Similar to the characteristics and attributes, receive higher ranking among those planning to visit or those who are likely um, who have recently visited the US. Not so much among those who are not planning on visiting or have been in the US longer than three years ago. When asked about their travel plans to the US, the majority indicated their intent to visit in the next two years or less. Of the travelers from the Americas, 53% expressed the intent to visit within a year, while Europeans display a lesser sense of urgency, with 10% staying, stating they will not visit at all. Now, travelers planning to visit the US were asked where they would prefer to go in terms of states and territories. The top four states they are interested in are, are the same across all regions, California, New York, Florida, and Hawaii. Now, looking at the terrains. The good news is travelers don't worry about safety or US politics affecting their trip. But the bad news is that they prefer other destinations. They need to plan well ahead and the short planning window complicates things. Looking at the terms by region, Asia Pacific travelers expressed the highest concerns about safety and currency exchange rates, accessibility and getting familiar with specific cities. Travelers from the Americas are particularly worried about visa requirements. Great news here, political climate to the US does not impact the likelihood of most of current respondents. Interestingly, among the three regions, Asia Pacific travelers are actually saying that political climate will make them more likely to visit the US. Wrapping up this section, it's essential to note that the majority of travelers prefer multi-city trips when visiting the US. Over half expressed their intention to explore between two to three cities. Almost 60% of Asia Pacific travelers and those with from the Americas are inclined to explore between two and three cities during their US visit. Now, before we wrap this session, this session, I will pass it to Chelsea for her to talk about the interactive platform and how to access this information at the country level. Chelsea. Thank you, Rosina, and hello, everyone. Some of you may already be familiar with the interactive market data that is available on our website. We are currently in the process of updating the existing profiles and creating new profiles for the expanded countries in our 2023 market intelligence study. This slide highlights the data that will be in the profiles for each individual country, including many of the data points Rosina walked through today. These profiles can be found under the resources tab of the Brand USA corporate website, and all 25 markets will be updated and published in two weeks. We hope that these easy to use self-service profiles can be a helpful resource for you all, but know we are here if you have any additional questions. 
Thank you all so much for your time today. As we mentioned, we've captured your questions and we'll follow up with some of those um, via email. Uh, please keep an eye out for further communications about additional research webinars from us in the new year. And we hope you have a wonderful rest of your week.